while we're waiting, I thought I'd go ahead and speak to you. So, you know, it's been about three and a half months now since uh, you elected me to be your servant in this position. And um, lots happened, met a lot more great people, um, which is a really great team, I feel like, and it's getting stronger all the time. Uh, you know, you never, you just really never fully know what to expect when you go into new things like this. Um, ran a business for, gosh, I'm getting old. It's getting close to a lifetime ago when I started my business. Um, you know, I had several employees over the years. Um, so, you know, you think you know a thing about managing um, the daily stuff that goes on within an organization, but nothing really prepares you unless you were the CEO of Home Depot. And even then, I don't know if it would fully prepare you for the difference between a company and a volunteer organization, right? So, um, but you know, it's really been great to realize the last several weeks that the bumps in the road and the struggles really should not be looked at in a negative light, even though it's very difficult to convince the subconscious mind as well as the, con the mind on the front end of the things that that's the case. You need to look at it as the opportunities to fill the holes, the opportunities to make things better. And so that's really what I've been trying to train myself um, to see this as when we have, you know, hey, uh, we're having this difficulty in communicating with this group or these folks or this particular problem exists or is, excuse, excuse me, happening within the organization on a communication level. Um, there's just all sorts of things that you run across. You're like, you know, uh, this is how we become great. We're going to fix that. And I continue to invest in the same thing that I told you when I was running to be your chair, which is I never wanted to take on this position and be uh, some sort of superhuman that you look towards, number one, because I'm not. Number two, but because you're just bottlenecking, bottlenecking growth at that point. Too many folks in, in modern leadership, in my opinion, don't really fully understand what real leadership is. Uh, you have to be able to believe truly. It can't just be words in the men and women that surround you on a daily basis. I talked about General Patton through the campaign back in January and February. General Patton, if you look at his quotes, fully understood the value of the people around him. He did not see himself, in my opinion, as somehow above them or better than them or more valuable than them. He understood that it took both halves the half that he was supplying from a direction and leadership standpoint and uh, an inspiration standpoint, but those fighting men and women, they are every bit, if not more, critical. And so that's really you and I's relationship. We're brothers and sisters. Uh, I am your servant. Um, it doesn't mean that any one of you, um, in my opinion, can come up and just tell me how it has to be. Um, that wouldn't work. You're, I'm your servant to you as a whole much like my constituents in Southwest Oregon, and for that matter, any disenfranchised, freedom-loving citizen across the state of Oregon who wants their constitutional values upheld. And so what we've been doing is um, just really trying to build ourselves into a fully organized Home Depot of Get You Elected in Oregon. We talk about the platform, we talk about Goodness. Come on, Apple product. Um, made in China. <laughs> um, but still, very quality product. Um, we talk about the platform. We talk about our values. Those are the foundation of who we are. And they, they are the most crit critical aspect of our beginning and who we should be at the end of the road we are all walking on. But I believe we have to, as an organization, look to focusing on how to get people elected. We have to get people elected for any of this to matter. We can have the greatest platform known to earth. We can have the most pure, righteous words in it. It can be straight from the Lord's lips. But if we aren't able to figure out how to motivate, inspire, organize people and get our candidates across the finish line, it, it just doesn't matter, folks. Um, we talk about it and we talk about it, how we need to focus on the 90% we agree on and politely, respectfully, lovingly debate the 10% that we don't. And that's true because the other side is coming. They're here. Uh, we are seeing a, uh, I don't like to say the ist words, 
but you have to. We have a fascist, communistic, Marxist, all sorts of other ists, um, cult movement working its way through the American culture right now. It's not hiding anymore. It's not that thing you and I, as people that are focused on politics, talk about and wish everybody else that wasn't here would start recognizing. They're saying it now. In the Senate Judiciary Committee that both Senator Linthicum and myself sit on, uh, Senator Michael Dembro from the Portland region, when we were talking about a specific bill that had to do with, as almost every Democratic bill they claim, has to do with equity or race somehow, even if it doesn't say anything about race, because that's just their, their plan, to shut you up by saying it's about race. So if you're opposed to this in any way, shape, manner, or form, even though we as the majority Democrats brought this bill forward and will force a decision upon you without any of your input, um, you must be racist if you don't agree with it, right? That's a tactic they're all using against us. I questioned Senator Dembro on several statements that he and his colleagues from the Democratic side of the aisle have been making in that conversation about that bill. And the question was, Senator Dembro, I heard a lot of the things you just said. Is equality not the goal for you? Is it something else? Here's the thing, folks. I never would have thought in that moment that he would have actually honest, answer, answered me honestly. I knew what the answer was. I just didn't believe that he and his colleagues would actually admit it. He said, and we'll get, the, we'll get the video clip and we'll be putting it out later in the summer and the fall and into next year's election cycle because the people of Oregon need to know. The Democratic Senator from Portland said, no, equality is not the goal. Equality is hard, is what he said. We need equity. A lot of folks don't know the difference between equity and equality. If you're anything like me, equality and equity sounds like it's the same thing they're so similar, right? But you really have to look into the meaning of words, sadly, not for Webster's Dictionary anymore. You're probably better off when it comes to those kind of words by going to, especially if they're more liberal language or leftist language. I, I don't know if I really call the Democrats liberal anymore. I think it's, it's something far different from liberal, classic liberalism. You have to go to Wikipedia if you really want to know what a leftist term really means. Uh, because this is how perversion of things works. You change the meaning subtly. And you slowly bend the minds of the people watching and listening to what you say. To believe something different than what you're actually trying to do and actually are doing. And that is the model that they are fully implementing against our children. Uh, we all see it. You have to be very careful about what your children watch on TV these days. Um, it's incredible the amount of messaging that is in everything now. Uh, I, I like to go back and watch the Smurfs or, you know, the Flintstones or, I don't know, DuckTales from the past. It's incredible the difference between classic children's entertainment versus modern. The classic doesn't really seem to have any agenda in it. Just fun times, you know, there's good, there's, there's evil. It's a clear line difference between the two. Um, they're not trying to tear down the family. They're not trying to tell, tear down in the children's mind their mother or their father's authority or that they love them. They're not trying to tear down um, the reality, in my opinion, that this earth and this universe is created by a super intelligent transcendent being. Um, nowadays, everything you and I mostly are is under assault. And we need to do something about it. Should we support anyone who claims to be a Republican for elected office? Absolutely not. You have to have some sort of a test within your own hearts on who you should and should not support. It really doesn't matter what party they're running for. But I think most of us, it's fair to say, believe that the Republican Party is the best vehicle to defend and restore the constitutional rights we have loved and held so dear to our hearts for so long that are being completely erased right before us in just a matter of months. We have to hold each other accountable. Um, I'm constantly thinking about this stuff because I do put it on myself to be able to answer your questions both honestly, which is always easy, 
to answer them honestly, but actually answer your questions that you put towards me in a way that gives you an answer. Sometimes I don't have a full answer for you. Some of these topics we'll discuss over the, over the coming months and years are so difficult and complex, in my opinion, if you really fully think through them, that there isn't always an easy answer to give, no matter how honest you are. Um, but we really do have to start figuring out what is the thing that unites us as Republicans together, and then we need to go run hard with that. For me, it's the Constitution. I'm a Christian first. I make no apologies about that. What God wants me to do is what I will do. I don't always know what that is. I'm always searching for that. But my Lord does not command me in scripture that I have seen to inflict my will through my government upon others. Yes, there must be accountability for murderers, rapists, and so on. But I really have no interest because my Lord does not seem to have any interest in me taking my deeply held personal beliefs and forcing them upon my neighbor. And in kind, I expect my neighbor to show me that same level of 100% respect for my core beliefs and to stay out of my business, whether it's jumping over my fence or going into the halls of the legislature or Congress and trying to pass laws that make the way you and I think, or just maybe the way I think, illegal. Those are the types of values I feel like we have to unite behind. They're a little bit broader than some single issue issues are. Because there has to be something we can unite behind. All this infighting that we are known for as a community of people, both here in the state, our counties, the nation, it is literally killing us. Because the enemy, sadly, which when I say the enemy, that is the one, in my opinion, that is unseen, who gets inside all of our heads all the time and pushes the division and the conflict and the pride that is tearing this nation apart. But from a political human standpoint, the political opponents, they are in lockstep in this march toward not only destroying our freedoms, but their own. And so what are we gonna do about it? Some of you may not like me. I'm probably on your side, frankly. Uh, I don't like me most of the time. <laughs> ask my wife, I'm not being funny. Ask my wife, ask my dad. When I, I, I shake my head all the time when I'm not talking to anybody. My wife knows me well enough to know now it's because I'm disgusted with myself about something I just didn't get quite right. You know, the way I treated somebody The action that I took the day before, the lack of wisdom that I hope I will gain at some point to know the answers to the questions you may have. But as much as some of you may not like me, I am for you if you love freedom and liberty. You don't have to like me for me to be for you. I've been voting no all session this year. Um, I'm getting to that. Gosh, come on, Uncle Dennis, give me a chance here. Hey, at least I didn't call him Grandpa. Um, I voted no on everything this year up until just the last couple weeks in the legislative session, both motions, um, bills in committee, committee uh, bills on the Senate floor, I even killed one of my own bills. Um, the Democratic chair for my health care committee was going to move one of my bills out that she really liked. And um, I really appreciate her for her kindness. In spite of the partisan politics, that particular individual has been a very kind person. But it was going to require my yes vote to move it out of the committee. But I couldn't do it. Sometimes I roll my eyes at the principled stance. I used to roll my eyes at Senator Rand Paul over some of his votes. Not anymore. He knew something then that I didn't know yet. If you don't have principle in the face of adversity, you're nothing. Um, 
if you want to do this kind of stuff, whether for the party or for government elected office, hoping to be popular and famous and whatever the heck else some people might be motivated by, you're nothing. This is not supposed to be fun. This is not supposed to be thrilling. It's not supposed to be glorious. If it becomes those things, you're starting to lose yourself. It has to be painful, especially in an era we find ourselves in right now. Yeah, if it was 1980-something and Ronald Reagan was in the White House and pro-America, pro-freedom, eliminate the communistic thought process by the way we live, by shining our light of freedom, then yeah, maybe you can think that way. Maybe it'd have been okay then. It's not that way now. And so I would challenge you to pick up your cross with me and march up that hill with respect and love and kindness in your heart, but with a steadfast courage that no amount of persecution, oppression, bullying, hate can cause you to lay down and not get back up anymore because you're doing it for someone other than yourself. That has to be the reason. <laughs> to Uncle Dennis's point, I did vote twice, yes, this year. And one of them was his bills. <laughs> and it's because of the kind of man he is. One of the very few, like five or less, in that entire building that I consider to be someone of true character. Him and I butt heads all the time, and I lose. You always win. Seriously. What's the deal with that? You always win. Is it like that, Diana, all the time? Does he always win? I don't believe you. I think you win in that case. No, but Dennis put forward a bill. And Senator Dick Anderson from the coast here, where you're blessed to live, or some of you are blessed to live, I should say, uh, put forward a bill that I was able to vote yes on the motions to pull those bills to the Senate floor um, so we could debate them and actually vote on the bill. I never got the chance to vote on those bills because the Democrats in unanimous block voted no to not give them the opportunity to be debated and fully voted on in the Senate. But what were those bills? At their core, they were one thing. They were not about one person. They were about all of us, and they were about restoring the freedoms and liberties that have been stolen away. But folks, it's not just Kate Brown who steals these away from us. You and I, indirectly, have contributed to this outcome. The more we fight with each other, the more we walk away from each other, the more we let them continue to walk forward in unison unobstructed by us because we're not willing to cut and bleed deep enough, the more it's your fault and my fault too. You have to take that burden upon yourself. It has to make you sick to your stomach when you go to bed at night when we lose. It really does. If you're not there yet, try to get there. Don't torment yourself like I do because I've probably taken a little too far. There's got to be a balance as my wise father's always told me. I haven't found that balance yet, but I'll tell you this. If I was going to err on one side or the other, I'd rather puke my guts out at night because I can't stand watching everything I love burn to the ground than just not care and be like, eh, tomorrow's another day. Maybe somebody else will fix it. Nobody else is going to fix it. It's on you. When you look in the mirror, it's on you. We have veterans active duty combat men and women in this room, they've already fought over there. You and I must fight over here now. We're just lucky that they're so servant-hearted, just different, better than you and I. I haven't served in the armed forces, so that's what I'm referring to. We're just lucky they're so amazing that they're still willing after fighting over there to still fight with us here. If you come along with me, I really do believe, no, if you come along with me and you give it your all and you go out and you find more that will give it their all, 
we will win. But that takes a choice. I've already made mine. It's your turn. Some of you have already made that. But for those of you who haven't, make it now. For those of you who won't, we don't need you. But I believe all of you are capable of making the right choice. I'm gonna wrap up with a few things. We have great people, and I gotta, I, you know, anybody like me who doesn't take the time, meaning someone who's called to serve you, anybody like me in my position that doesn't take the time to name some of the great men and women that are making these, these goals even possible isn't worth anything. I'd like to thank Secretary Becky Mitz for all of her tireless work. She has to stand next to Representative Mike Nierman and face the fire in Salem. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Billy Murphy, our Executive Director, also former military, well, always military. Army, correct? My executive assistant, Wendy Jensen, she's also the vice chair for Benton County's Republicans. Truly wonderful, servant-hearted woman. Mr. Kevin Orr, who, like I said, one of the great ones who plays Hurt. <laughs> um, Kevin's just an animal. He just works tirelessly. Very smart man. Mr. Larry Morgan. I need my phone here real quick, sorry. Larry could not be here today. He is one of our key role team members. He could not be here today um, because he's got an ulcer because, frankly, he's just a machine. And he was puking blood because of how hard he works. He's back and forth from D.C. and all over the country all the time while doing a full-time job in a government position. And um, I don't know if I know anybody that convinces me that they are for sure smarter than me. Than Larry. I mean, like, when I look at Larry, I'm like, there ain't no way I can keep up with that guy. Um, just an incredible individual. Larry is going to be responsible in great ways of t helping turn us around. Margie Hughes, like I said earlier today, just a great person. I didn't know Margie before six months ago. Um, Margie never, ever fails to impress me. Mr. Rob Schillings works very hard in our bunch here and works very hard in Coos Bay, leading that band of rebels. <laughs> They're all up front right here. They are rebels. It's because I think it's because you're so close to Douglas County. Great people. Um, we've already voted, so I feel like it's okay to say this. Tracy Honnell, I didn't know Tracy five, six months ago. Tracy works very hard, doesn't ask for thank yous. Very brilliant woman, very sincere person. Stephen Lloyd, very talented young man. Does great things with the Young Republicans, or the College Republicans of Oregon, sorry, Young Republicans of Oregon. I have a lot of hope when I meet individuals like Stephen and his brothers and sisters around him. People like Dimitri who are down in the middle of the floor here. Jody Fleck. Jody does a lot of great work. Tireless. Just always asking to do more. Doesn't complain about anything, but why am I not allowed to do more? <laughs> I don't know very many people like that, folks. That's the only complaint they have is give me more and you're not giving me enough to do. Um, I have to mention... My father, Dick Hurd, who's in the back, my mentor. A very patient man. I am not the father that my dad is, but I'm trying. My sons deserve to have a father like I did. That's why I try to make sure that they get as much time with him as possible because as much as I want to be like my dad, I'm not confident that I have that ability too much of a crazy loud mouth to be considered as great as my dad. 
and then my wife Hannah, um, who couldn't be here today, just because she knew it kind of stressed me out with there not being a pool, and <laughs> my boys are uh, too interject to be left in a hotel room or running around in the back screaming and yelling. Um, so, again, being the tireless servant that my wife is, she um, stayed home with the boys. But I am married to the best woman, and um, I. Uh, we have a lot of great details and stuff we can talk about, but I really just wanted to speak to you from um, my insides today. For those of you that I have offended in my time in this position, it was never intentional. Um, I make mistakes, I make bad choices, I'm sorry, and I hope you can forgive me. I'm just doing the best I can to serve you in this. We're not gonna agree on everything, and the burden of leadership um, commands me to just move forward in spite of the fact that some people are gonna hate me no matter how good my intentions were. Uh, I don't want anybody to cry for me. I don't want anybody to feel bad for me. I want you to pray for me. And I want you to pray for each other. And if uh, if there's people out there, it doesn't matter what faction, and there are factions within this party, it doesn't matter what faction you're from, if someone throws a rock at you, let it fall to the ground and walk away. Do not pick up that rock and throw it back anymore. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you. I have another year and a half or so to prove myself. I hope you'll give me that long. And when it's all said and done, I hope you'll find me worthy to give me another shot. Um, but like I said to some of you before, you elected me this. If someone comes along that you know is better, you better vote for them and not me. Because this is not about me. It's about you and it's about our kids. And I mean that. Thank you. Okay, I'm back as your head teller. And we do have a new, newly elected National Committee woman. There were 124 votes counted, 92 in person, 32 online. Sandy Dan Danforth got 60. Tracy Honnell got 64. It took 63 to have a majority plus one. So Tracy, congratulations. You are the main national leader. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this honor and privilege. I, I'm so happy. We are really going to turn things around. Like I talked about that RNC call. And, and over the years, as vice chair, I got to be on some of these phone calls. And you never heard that excitement coming from the RNC saying, we are so excited about your team. We're excited about what you're talking about. We're excited that you're doing. And I want to also give credit to Larry Morgan on there. Dallas was not exaggerating when he talked about you know, all the brilliance of Larry and him helping us put together our plans and being a really big part of this. So um, hats off to Larry. I wish he could be here. I hope he feels better. But uh, I'm really excited to partner with him, to partner with Dallas, to partner with our team. I'm excited to win. Win, win, win. Let's get it done. Let's get it done together. I've got just kind of a fun little note here. You know, we all get phone calls that come in on our phones that's a number unknown. You know, sometimes it's people who just really don't like us. Sometimes it's telemarketers. Sometimes it's media. So I don't tend to answer my phone when it's a number I don't recognize. I've put all of your phone numbers in my phone, just so you know, so that when you call me and say, you know, I'm excited about this, I want to get this done, or even if you say, Tracy, you dropped the ball on this, please work on it, call me. Your name is in my phone. I will pick up if I'm not asleep or somewhere else, or I'll call you back. It's really important to have a really good relationship with the counties. I like to get on the road. I like to travel, so I hope you invite me to come visit you and uh, come to your fundraisers and whatnot, we're gonna see a whole lot of each other. We're gonna work together and we're gonna win, win, win in Oregon. Thanks everybody. Thank